Hello everyone, my name is Vincent Thieu. I'm a TV reviewer and professional calibrator. And this TV beside me is the 65-inch Sony AG9 OLED, which is also marketed in the USA as the Bravia A9G. The AG9 is designated by Sony as a master series TV, which means that the display will seek to faithfully reproduce the creator's intent by coming as close as possible to the picture output of Sony's own BVM X300 reference mastering monitor. The Sony AG9 replaces the AF9 as the Japanese brand's flagship OLED TV, and in addition to 55-inch and 65-inch models, it will also be available in a massive 77-inch screen size. Given that the outgoing AF9 and this new AG9 was launched within six months of each other, it's very likely that both sets have been developed at the same time. Sony themselves have even admitted that picture quality is very similar between the two. The main differences then are the design and the remote control. Whereas the AF9 sports a lean-back design with an easel-style kickstand, the AG9 sits almost vertically on an extremely low-profile stand which doesn't take up much space at all. I say it almost vertically because when scrutinized from the sides, the panel on our review sample was still tilted very very slightly backwards, making me wonder if there's something wrong with the way I screw. Due to OLED's self-emissive display characteristics that don't require a backlight, the panel itself and the bezel can be made to be super slim, and there's a small Sony logo at the bottom left corner of the screen. The connections are found on the left rear of the television, including spring clip terminals for the Acoustic Surface Audio Plus speakers on the AG9 to be used as the center channel in a surround sound setup, as well as four full bandwidth HDMI 2.0b ports with HDCP 2.3 compliance. The only HDMI 2.1 feature implemented on the Sony AG9 or A9G is Enhanced Audio Return Channel or EARC on HDMI Input 3, and you will have to go into the user menu to enable it specifically. We tested EARC using a Denon X3500 receiver, and it worked well, passing Dolby through HD Atmos soundtrack from 4K Blu-rays through the TV's HDMI 3 port. There are not only one, not only two, not only three, but a total of four detachable plastic panels at the back which allows for a clean look together with the effective cable management system. A quick note about the onboard Acoustic Surface Audio Plus system that generates sound from the screen. Compared with last year's AF9, the audio system has been changed from 3.2 to 2.2 channels, consisting of two actuators and two subwoofers at the back. This is partly to achieve a slimmer design for flush wall mounting, but we don't think there's any significant drop in sound quality. The Sony AG9 still delivers some of the best in-TV sound on the market, with outstanding clarity and sufficiently weighty bass, made all the more impressive by the fact that there's no visible exterior speakers or sound bra on this television. The center speaker mode worked okay in our setup, but it's something that you have to experiment yourself in your own environment to see if the timber will match up well with your home theater speakers. Probably the most major upgrade on the Sony AG9 over the AF9 is the premium remote control. With an ergonomic shape and excellent tactile feedback, not to mention the responsive Android TV system for a change, the remote is an absolute joy to use. True story. As you may or may not know, I review TVs from time to time, and while carrying out side-by-side -side comparisons between the Sony AG9 and other televisions, there were occasions when I had accidentally picked up the Sony remote to change the picture settings on the other TV unsuccessfully, just to give you an idea of how much I liked the remote. Sony has decreased the amount of installed memory from 4GB on the AF9 to 2.5GB on the AG9, but the Android TV platform still feels very fast and responsive for me to navigate the apps and into the user menu and picture settings. Before I start to talk about picture quality, let's all take a moment here to appreciate our sponsor for this video, which is UK electrical retailer Crampton & More. If you are thinking about getting a new TV, even if it's not this Sony AG9, please support this channel by considering buying from them. Call Crampton & More on 01302 
365-760 and ask for Richard. Mention HDTV Test and he'll take care of you with great price and service. Thanks again for your support. All OLED TVs can produce true blacks owing to pixel level light control. It's the area just above black that has proven challenging for various TV manufacturers to render in an artifact-free manner. Sony OLEDs generally suppress near-black quantization noise and microblocking artifacts better than most other TV brands, and the same applies to the Bravia AG92, as you can see in the scene from Father Brown, which is captured off-air. However, in recent months, it has been discovered that many 2018 and 2019 OLEDs suffer from near-black chrominance overshoot, manifesting as flashing artifacts, particularly in heavily compressed dark scenes. Our Sony KD65AG9 review sample exhibited this issue, but in a less frequent manner than 2018 LG OLEDs pre-firmware update. For example, we didn't see the flashing in this slow pan sequence from Gerard's game in 1080p SDR on Netflix, but some in the scene from Better Call Saul Season 4 Episode 4 in Ultra HD 4K SDR, again from Netflix. Sony is currently relying solely on its superior processing without any specific remedy, whereas LG is not only increasing the strength of dithering, but also darkening near-black gamma slightly to mask the chrominance overshoot issue. So if you examine closely on a very dark scene, an LG C9 would present more static dithering noise and look a tad darker than the Sony AG9, but the Sony would be a bit more prone to near-black flashing. Whether you'll see these near-black flashing artifacts depends on many factors. Panel variants. If the source content is bit stuffed or highly compressed, your picture settings, and most importantly, how much ambient light is there in the room. Because these artifacts realistically appear in the very dark regions of the picture, even a very small amount of ambient light will prevent you from seeing them. What I'm trying to say is, yes, the Sony AG9 is affected by near-black chrominance overshoot, but it's unlikely that you'll spot them in real-life content due to Sony's originally excellent near-black handling, together with other factors I listed. In my opinion, Sony probably won't even contemplate darkening near-black gamma to mask this issue, because the whole point of Master Series is to match the BVM X300 mastering monitor and making the picture darker however slight will be steering away from that goal. Which brings us to color accuracy. We used the Kalman for Bravia app to unlock two further picture modes, Custom for Pro 1 to be used for day mode calibration, and Custom for Pro 2 for night mode calibration. After calibrating using Kalman AutoCal, color accuracy was excellent on our Bravia AG9 review unit, as you can see from this challenging Color Checker SG chart where 140 color patches were measured. Average delta error was only 1.13, with no measurement exceeding the humanly perceptible threshold of delta error 3. Translated to layman's terms, all colors including skin tones will look natural and realistic. For example, in the scene from Skyfall where James Bond meets Q in the National Gallery. Bright uniformity was incredibly clean when checked with full field gray slides, with no sign of bending, dirty screen effect or color tinting, meaning that you can watch sports and play games happily without being distracted by such issues. Unfortunately, our review sample exhibited some vignetting, particularly on the left side of the screen, when displaying full field slides just above black. So in this very dark sequence from Harry Potter where Voldemort's army gather on a hilltop, you can see some shadow detail missing from the extreme left edge of the picture, compared with another OLED television with better dark uniformity. As with any OLED TV you buy from any brand, there's still going to be some panel lottery that even Sony's factory Mura compensation techniques couldn't address. You may have better luck with your own AG9 or A9G, but as I calibrate more of these televisions for customers, I will be able to report on whether this vignetting is limited to our review sample or not. While uniformity can vary from one unit to another, what you can take to the bank is Sony's class-leading motion and video processing. Even with motion flow disabled, slow panning shots in 24 frames per second movies, both in SDR and HDR, 
were handled smoothly without any sign of telecynic judder. Should you choose to engage motion interpolation, Sony's technology is less likely to incur interpolation artifacts than other TV brands. That said, there's still room for improvement for Sony's motion flow and film mode implementation, not only on the AG9 or A9G, but also on all Sony TVs with the X1 Ultimate chipset. First, the default motion flow and film mode settings in the most accurate picture modes that would be custom or custom for Pro 1 or custom for Pro 2 would introduce the occasional stutter in 50Hz news broadcast we get in the UK and Europe, especially those with mixed edits. Fortunately, this can be eradicated with the correct settings. Second, as you can see from this horizontally scrolling test pattern, engaging motion flow can boost motion resolution from the sample and hold baseline of 300 lines to OLED's current ceiling of 650 lines, but the smoothness setting that is required to reach 650 lines of motion resolution would also add some soap opera effect to 24 frames per second films, so we would normally turn motion flow off, which is not as bad as it sounds because, let's say on LG OLEDs, we would turn true motion off anyway due to the artifacts it brings. If Sony had provided independent de-blur and de judder controls, similar to those found on LG, Panasonic, and Samsung televisions, then it may be possible for viewers to enjoy both high motion clarity for watching sports and no soap opera effect for watching movies, all with one set of motion flow settings without requiring users to manually adjust the values depending on the content. Just something for Sony engineers to think about. The upscaling capabilities of the X1 Ultimate processor is fantastic, retrieving sharp detail from this SMPTE RP133 test card in 576i without excessive ringing or fizziness. Even without the help of smooth gradation, the gradients in the sky of the Martian already looked smoother than many other OLEDs, though we noticed that in Dolby Vision mode, the smooth gradation control on the low setting seemed to be the off switch, at least on our review sample on the latest firmware. In this paused frame from the Dolby Vision playback of the Matrix on 4K Blu-ray, you can see that as we changed smooth gradation from low to off, the detail around the door in the background became blurrier, as if some spatial filter was being applied. We have fed back our findings to Sony to see if it's a bug that only affected our AG9 review unit. For HDR, DCI-P3 color gamut coverage came in at 98%, while peak brightness measured 530 nits on a 10% window after calibration and 135 nits full fill. Some of you will look at these peak brightness figures and go, oh, it's not as bright as LG OLEDs. Oh, it's not even as bright as last year's Sony AF9 or A9F, which could hit 600 nits, so the AG9 must be a downgrade. Nothing could be further from the truth. Unlike some other manufacturers, Sony is not interested in artificially boosting the peak brightness on static test patterns to get higher scores. I mean, if they wanted to game the system, they probably could have increased the white subpixel boosting upon detection of a 10% window in HDR mode, but they're not doing that. What Sony is interested in is image accuracy. To try and mimic the output of a BVM X300 mastering monitor, that's the philosophy behind Master Series televisions. As you can see in this scene from The Greatest Showman, there's dynamic tone mapping on the Sony AG9. Pay attention to how her face darkened slightly once we summoned the information bar from our Oppo 203 player. What this means is that the TV will be analyzing the picture on the fly and make each scene look as bright as it needs to be, with an eye on accuracy. During playback of real-world HDR10 content, the Sony AG9 equipped with dynamic tone mapping, doesn't look dim at all in a side-by-side -side comparison with an OLED with a measured peak brightness of 700 nits. We're using this high APL scene of the beach in Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children as an example. And I despair when other non-technical reviews claimed that the Bravia AG9 looked duller than LG OLEDs or Samsung QLEDs. As you can see from this EOTF tracking chart, Sony is merely adhering to ST2084 perceptual quantization standard in an accurate manner, similar to a mastering monitor, before rolling off at the top end to preserve some specular highlight detail, unlike some other TV brands which are over-brightening their PQ UOTF tracking to achieve more HDR pop at the expense of image depth and accuracy. Talking of specular highlight detail, 
The Sony AG9 still clipped some of the brightest detail around the sun in the sequence from the 4000 nit 4K Blu-ray of Pan. As I've explained over and over again in my previous videos, tone mapping high nit content into a display with lower peak brightness involves striking a balance between preserving specular highlight detail and maintaining overall APL or average picture level. There's no right and wrong here, but Sony is firmly in the camp of maintaining APL, and given that the BVM X300 mastering monitor would just hard clip and blow out bright highlight detail above 1000 nits, it's not surprising that the AG9 Master Series OLED is willing to throw away some of the brightest detail. Turning our attention to other HDR formats supported by the Sony AG9, we watched Wimbledon in HLG HDR through the TV's internal BBC iPlayer app, and it looked good. Sony currently don't have any plans to support HDR10 Plus on their televisions, and in a future video, I may demonstrate why HDR10 Plus dynamic metadata is not as important as you think on a high-end TV. Dolby Vision content on the Sony AG9 still looked a bit darker than on an LG OLED, such as in this shot from the 4K Blu-ray of the Matrix. We believe this is due to the low latency Dolby Vision profile that Sony uses. Speaking from experience, the best Dolby Vision picture quality is still provided by LG OLEDs. On Sony OLEDs, we actually prefer to watch in vanilla HDR10, especially with the help of dynamic tone mapping on X1 Ultimate sets. For gaming, input lag measured 26 milliseconds in both 1080p SDR and 4K HDR game modes, and while this figure is probably responsive enough for all but the most hardcore Twitch gamers, it's the absence of HDMI 2.1 gaming features, such as Auto Low Latency Mode or ALLM, and Variable Refresh Rate or VRR, that will steer gamers away from Sony and towards LG and Samsung. To get your Xbox One X and PS4 Pro to send out 4K at 60Hz HDR video signal to the Sony AG9, you'll need to venture into the TV's user menu and change HDMI signal format from standard to enhanced. To sum up, the Sony AG9 produces, by and large, the same excellent picture quality as the AF9, and of course, the AG9 is now available in a bigger 77-inch screen size. Sometimes, especially in a digital world where there's information overload, it's very tempting for us to take measurements at face value and go, right, the AG9 has lower peak brightness and less memory than the AF9, so it must be a downgrade. But as we've seen over and over again, measurements don't tell the whole story. Far from it. Peak brightness measurements on a static 10% window doesn't take into account underlying dynamic tone mapping which empowers the AG9 to look as bright as a 700 nit OLED on HDR10 content. Even with a decrease in installed memory from 4GB to 2.5GB, the Android TV system still feels lightning fast to use and navigate. Rustically though, there's been no notable upgrade in image quality from the Sony AF9 to the AG9, and while we appreciate it's extremely difficult to improve upon the already outstanding picture quality on the AF9, other OLED vendors are not standing still. LG has added HDMI 2.1, Panasonic and TP Vision Philips have added Dolby Vision. Nevertheless, considering its color accuracy and class-leading motion and video processing, the Sony KD65 AG9 earns our highly recommended award. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HDTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.